welcome back to my channel. I'm coming at you early in the morning in my still echoey room for get ready with me with pretty much all new makeup. I'm looking and I think that like the primer product that I'm gonna use and my concealer, oh, I didn't pick out a highlight. And the highlight are the only things that aren't gonna be brand new to me anyways. So let's go ahead and get started. That 100% pure eye cream that I use, that I talked about my favorites, is truly like a game changer for me because I had one of those dreams last night. Have y'all ever had, and I feel like everybody has, that type of dream that you, you're like crying in the dream, but you're also crying in real life on your pillow. That's what happened to me last night. It's like the dream never stopped. Like I would wake up crying, I would fall back asleep, and I would jump right back into that dream. So I woke up so incredibly puffy today, and that eye cream has helped. Now I'm still a little puffy, but it helped. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. I said the primer product that I'm gonna use is not necessarily new, but it's one that I just can't stop using lately, and it's the Jane Arda Liquid Minerals. This is in the color Suntan. So what I do is I take a few pumps and I like using the Jane Ardell contour brush, but really any kind of like fluffier brush or even your hands. And I just kind of pick it up on the brush and then apply it all over. So this has little beads of pigment suspended in like an aloe vera hydrating base. It's got hyaluronic acid in it. Um, it's a very sheer to light coverage but it really plumps up the skin and that's why i like using it as primer especially for the type of foundation that i'm going to use today and honestly i have used this many times as just a foundation and gone over like a little bit of my redness with some concealer if it's still there but usually it dies down and this is just a really easy lightweight hydrating base however you want to use it it's a good base now I'm going to go in with my Color Science Total Eye 3-in-1, and I'm going to use this as my corrector. And y'all, I go back and forth. I talked about my top three favorite correctors in, what was it, top, like products that I just don't want to be without video. And this is just one of them. And I go in between this one and the Jane Iredell and the Fit Glow. And there's really no rhyme or reason. I just kind of pick one up. And I go in stages, you know, like I've been using the Color Science for a while now. And then I'll go back to one of the others for a while. And yeah, it just, it just depends. But even though with all the darkness that I had from the crying session I had overnight, it is still, like that still helped. You can still see a little, a little darkness, but you know, I'm human, so. So I'm gonna be using a powder foundation today, so I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my concealer and set it. This is not new, this is the Clay de Poe concealer. I did wanna talk about a brush that I've been loving using concealers with on my clients, and that's the BK Beauty 205 brush. I don't typically use brushes myself with concealers. I like to use a sponge, but um, the most hygienic way to work on clients is to either use a disposable sponge or a brush and I just love the angle it just fits right up into the corner of the eye and under the lash line now for this I do like to use a brush because I don't like to just draw it on my face I feel like that just dispenses too much product so I will pick up the product from the brush so this is in the color almond so I just kind of load up the product on the brush and I like to keep this just where I'm the darkest and just kind of tap it in. But see how the angle of that brush fits right up in that inner corner so well where most of us are the darkest. And then you can kind of dispense the product as you need out. Even if you're not an eyeshadow wearer, but you like to use brushes for concealers. I mean, look at that. It's like that covered the rest of that darkness. At least for me. I know sometimes when I go back and edit, I say something like that and it's still pretty dark on camera. So y'all might be laughing, but for me, that did the trick. And I'm going to set with the Pat McGrath powder, which I cannot believe. I mean, you can see there's no kind of hump on it anymore. I have definitely 
dialed that down, but I can't believe I haven't hit pan with, I use this every single day. And this is my Wayne Goss number two brush, which is just my favorite with this product and this purpose. And I just washed my brushes two days ago. So this one's like super soft because it doesn't have a ton of product on it. So nice. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with the powder foundation. Where's the brush I'm using for that? It's right here in my cup. So y'all probably, well, if you saw my video, if you've seen my last, month before last favorites, y'all know that I absolutely love the Alima Pure loose powder foundation. And I am not a powder foundation girl. Like it's not something that I lean towards. It's just, it's just not. I've always liked liquid foundations. But since trying the Alima Pure, I wanted to try more and I wanted to try their pressed because somebody commented, I think a couple people commented on that and saying that one of their favorites was the pressed. So I got this and y'all, it has no name on the back. This is my label because I always label when I get things and it has no name. So I'll have to look up my order and tell you on the screen or in the description box what shade this is, but this is what it looks like. And I got the Alema Pure powder brush to go with it because I felt like even though I have brushes that will work, this had amazing reviews for being extremely soft, which it is. And I just really liked the size of it and the look of the density and it just works really well. So I've just used this once, but I just pick up some on the brush and then kind of buff it on the skin. So that Jane Iredell serves as like a little bit of a sticky, it's not sticky, but just a little bit of something for the powder foundation to adhere to. And then I will also just stipple in. So up on the forehead where there's not as much space to buff, the nose, which I didn't put, I typically put concealer on my nose, but for some reason I didn't with that clay to pose. So we'll be able to see the true coverage of this. And I, I mean, I just liked it. Like I'm really gravitating towards powder foundations in the summer because I mean, that covered my redness pretty well because they don't melt off and slide off like liquid foundations do. They leave a pretty finish on my skin. So I've liked that one. This is only the second time that I've worn it, but so far I really like it. I feel like I need to bronze my skin, but let's go ahead and go into eyeshadow. I broke down and got the Natasha Denona bronze palette. There's only one other small palette that I have like this and it's the Sunset, Sunrise, y'all know which one, the red one, which I was on the fence about and I was like, I don't know if I really want it or if I want to sell it in a blog sale, but then I used it in a makeup that I just don't use video and I fell in love with it. So <laughs> I'm keeping it. But this one is just right up my alley in colors. And I know y'all have seen tons of swatches and videos. Here's the thing, I'm, and I've said this before, but I, I know I have a lot of new followers and I am not somebody who buys something, overnight ships it, and puts a review up like the day after it comes out. I like to play with my makeup a little bit so that I can tell y'all what it's like versus just a first impression. So I've never wanted to, and plus it's too stressful. It's like, can I get it? Can I get it in time to get it up before everybody else? It's just too, it's not, it's just, not me. So I know everybody else has tons of reviews on a lot of these products already. I'm just using them for y'all. So I think I've only used this once. I think I'm going to go into Beach first, which is this nice matte color right here. I'm just going to apply this in the crease because it's like the perfect crease color. I used, last time I used that Sundown color, which is the pretty orangey matte color. And you want to talk about some blue eyes. This is a blue eyed person's dream for a palette. Okay, so I've got that. And then I think I'm going to take um, a skinnier brush and go into Suntan, which is right there. Y'all, there's so much right there. And I'm just going to... Put that just in the crease, but not as far in as I did with that beach color. Just kind of a little bit out on the outer corner. So just to intensify that. 
And I will say the colors look darker on the eyes, for me anyways, than they do in the pan. They just blend out on my skin tone darker. And now I'm gonna go into mag magma right here. And just put a little bit on the outer corner. But I'm talking, I mean, you wanna talk pigment, these colors just, I mean, they're full of pigment. But this one, I'm gonna, it looks a little patchy. So I have to blend it out with that. I haven't used that color yet. Yeah, this one's applying, I mean, despite the amount of pigment it has, it's just applying a little patchy in my eye. I don't know if y'all can see that. See how I, mm -hmm. I thought about doing an all matte look, but now I think I'm going to kind of try to disguise some of that with some shimmer. So I'm gonna go into silk, which is this really gold color right here. I used true copper the first time that I did this, used this palette, and it was gorgeous. Well, this is turning out to be a little bit smokier than I wanted it to be going to Lowe's today. <laughs> They're gonna be like, whoa. I'll have to let you know in the comment section if I feel like these shimmers fall down because sometimes some of her shadows, I feel like if they're pretty chunky and shimmer, they tend to fall under the eye throughout the day, which is not ideal. So I'll let y'all know down in the comment section or in the description box if that happened or not. All right, let's get some color on this face because this is just weirding me out. I got the new Catrice Sungasm Luminizing Bronzer from Ulta. I did a fairly large Ulta drugstore haul, and this is what it looks like. And this is in the color Golden Ecstasy, C01. I do think they had two colors. I'm gonna use my Refer number four brush. This one is, to be number one, was a little um, dark but it's, it definitely, I mean, it works, it definitely works. And I feel like with this kind of eye look, I need a little more color. The first time I used it though, I didn't kind of like stamp it off into my hand, which I typically do with all my bronzers and brushes, blushes. And it was extremely pigmented on the face. Like I had to do some serious blending. So just beware, but it is a luminizing bronzer. Like it's kind of a baked jelly, jelly formula. And I've been taking my bronzers kind of down my nose and over a little bit. Hopefully once we blend everything out, it'll be fine. I am gonna take a little bit right up here at my hairline. I always have trouble with bronzer sticking right there. Okay, I didn't have a new highlight, so I wanted something to kind of match this palette. So I picked up the Persona Cosmetics uh, Zuma, which has always been a favorite of mine. Pretty intense highlight, but it's still really smooth on the skin. And I feel like this eye look, which is way more intense than I intended, like can handle a pretty intense highlight. Again, I'm gonna buff it out, I promise. It's intense. <laughs> this whole look is way more intense than I wanted. The blush is a really pretty blush that's not super intense. This is from Jane Iredell and it's called Sheer Honey. I'm slowly but surely making a full collection of Jane Iredell blushes because I love them so much. I love the size of them. I love the colors of them. And this one is just a very pretty matte, neutral shade. And I love it. Now we're gonna buff, much needed with my hourglass. Radiant light, I know that this might be an intense highlight for a hot second. <laughs> I also feel like with powder foundations, you can buff a lot more in this step because it's really not gonna like mess anything up, drag any liquids underneath around. See, that's why I love the buffing step, y'all, so very much. I'm gonna go into the beach color only. These do have quite a bit of kick up, so make sure that you tap off. And my Wayne Gossamer 20, I'm just gonna buff this under the eye to finish off the look. But I mean, I hope that you can see, and I feel like her other palettes are like that too, where the colors are so much darker on the eye than they are 
in the palette. I feel, I feel like my darkness is coming back again. So I have this little sample from MAC. It's their Studio Fix powder and it's in NC20. And I keep it right in the drawer right next to me on my vanity for cases where I feel like I'm getting a little dark still under my eyes. And I'll take just a little bit and press it there. And to me, it brightens it up a little bit. Honestly, I think today I'm a lost cause and I just need to be okay with it. But I did want to share that with y'all because it is something that I do on the very rare occasion that my darkness is just too much for me to handle. There are no brow bone or inner corner highlights in this palette. So I'm just going to use, because it's here, the Zuma. And just put a little bit of that in the inner corner. A little bit on my brow bone. Now I use this every day, but especially when I'm using some kind of powder foundation or mineral makeup or something, I use the Jane Iredell Pomest. It's a hydration spray, so it's not really going to make your makeup last longer, but I don't have an issue with that, especially with powder foundation. It just kind of melts everything in. So I'm going to do lips before I go on to mascara. And I have a couple of new lip products I'm going to try out with y'all. This is from Fit Glow Beauty. I got this from Breeze Co Beauty. I'll link it down below. And it is their lip color cream in the color Beach. And I just love Fit Glow's packaging. Pretty much all of their products come like that. At least their foundation, concealers, correctors, lipsticks, lip serums. So this is the packaging. And then you take it and you push down on the top and it pops out the bottom. So again, this is the color Beach right there. It's a nude color, but it's got a little bit of a sheen to it. I have not worn this on the lips yet. Okay, they are super moisturizing and very easy to apply. So that is the color Beach, which I actually like. But y'all know I'm a gloss girl. Got me a couple new glosses. This one's from Jane Iredell. I already knew I loved her glosses. And this is the color Iced Mocha. It's actually pretty similar to the color Beach. It's just got a little bit more of a sheen to it. These two go really well together. I, I wore this all day yesterday. Already know I like it. So I did get a new mascara. So I'm going to put my Jane Iredell Lash Conditioner on because I use this every day with mascara so I know how to compare mascaras with this on. And this is from Essence and it's their High Beauty Vegan Volume Mascara. Everything's blown out even though it's not super bright outside. I gotta figure this out. It has organic hemp seed oil and sunflower wax which are conditioning and strengthening. So I've tried this once and it's okay, but it is not my Chanel or my Fit Glow or my Ilia. Like, it's a little bit clumpy. It doesn't put clumps of mascara on my eyes. It just kind of makes my eyelashes clump together, if you can see. But that is the first kind of coat. I'm going to do the other eye and then go back for a second. So this is my good eye for eyelashes. Everything always looks good on that, or better anyways. So I'm gonna go in with a second coat. Okay, so it's not bad. I'm not like completely angry or anything about how my eyelashes look. They don't look bad. But I will tell you, the first time I used this, I went to wash my face and I could barely get it off. Like I had to scrub. And I do not like scrubbing. I used my beloved Sephora waterproof eye makeup remover. And this is not even waterproof. Like it doesn't claim to be waterproof. But it was very, very, very difficult to remove. So I'm going to have to give it a thumbs down because of that. I like something that's going to come off easily. So that I don't have to tug at my eye area or lose my eyelashes or anything like that. Other than that, it's not a bad mascara. Especially for the price. I think it was like 5 bucks, Maybe not even $5. I mean, it's Essence. It's very affordable. But... Um, it's just the removal was not good at all. So that completes this look using all new makeup. Now I have 
accumulated so much new makeup that I have a whole nother look over here waiting to do and I believe that that's going to be my next video. So I'm just going to have two videos in a row, an entire week dedicated to new makeup that I'm using, liking, not liking, giving you reviews because I've tried everything that I'm going to be doing in the next video as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have gotten some really good new makeup lately, let me know in the comments section below. Let us all know because I know a lot of y'all read all the comments and um, kind of chat with each other, which I love. My hair needed to come down. It was bothering me. It's still bothering me, but whatever. Thank y'all so much for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. Hope you're all staying safe and sane and healthy, and that most of all, you all go out and have a very blessed day.